Okay, I'm going to be that guy, and I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. If you can get up, give it a stretch, and while you're standing, I want you to try wiggling your toes. Pretty easy. I want you to shake somebody's hand near you. Still pretty easy. But imagine if you could never do that. Imagine if you could never get out of your seat or wiggle your toes or shake somebody's hand. That's a reality for over 300,000 North Americans or six times the population of UBC that can't get out of their seats because they have a spinal cord injury. Okay, everybody can sit down. <laughs> but while you're sitting, uh, let's be grateful that we could all stand. Um, so I want to tell you another story that happened very recently. Two weeks ago, a close family friend of mine was in an accident. Uh, my friend's dad, Chris, looks like this patient. He has a spinal cord injury, and he's paralyzed from the neck down. And unfortunately, the doctors weren't able to accurately diagnose him. And in order to diagnose a spinal cord injury, we need a patient to physically tell us if they can move certain muscles or feel certain sensations. And I'll tell you those sensations include the anal region. It's an incredibly invasive exam. Do you think Chris, that, he doesn't look like that, uh, <laughs> when he, the other guy, uh, can move any muscle or talk about any sensation he has other than pain. And so I'm trying to find a way that we can better diagnose patients like Chris, patients with spinal cord injury. Specifically, I'm trying to find some signal in the blood called a biomarker that can tell us how injured the spinal cord is. And biomarkers are pretty common. If you think about high body temperature, that's a biomarker for fever. High blood pressure, that's a biomarker for stroke. So for spinal cord injury, we study tiny pieces of genetic material called microRNA. Where DNA is like the whole blueprint to your body, microRNA are like text messages. When the spinal cord is injured, it releases specific microRNA into the blood, and we can detect those. Think of like an oil tanker that runs into a rock. We don't know how bad the damage is initially, but we can get a pretty good idea based on how much oil has leaked into the ocean. Similarly, I can tell how injured the spinal cord is based on how much microRNA I detect in the blood. And our lab is very lucky to have the world's largest collection of blood from patients with spinal cord injury. And I use those samples to profile thousands of microRNA molecules using the same technology that was used for the Human Genome Project. That's called next generation sequencing. And so far we found a set of genes that seem to be more predictive of outcome than the current tools that we're using. And I'm hoping that we can validate these in trauma centers across Canada so that patients like Chris are able to be more accurately diagnosed effectively treated, and maybe one day he can get out of his chair and wiggle his toes.